All right, here we are. We're standing in front of my uh, my little machining center I have. Um, it's a uh, small Benchman. It's a VMC 5000. Um, on my other YouTube uh, channel, IC Customs USA, I did a uh, refit video series on building this machine. I use it for my motorcycles and whatever else I can come up with. I haven't machined nothing on it in a long time. It's actually been a couple months since I've actually done anything on it. So we're making these uh, new bushings for the uh, Ford 530 hay baler. Um, I've already machined one testing out. Actually, I have machined two. The first one didn't pass simply because I've never machined nylon before and uh, figuring out the you know speeds and feeds and I figured out that coolant was better than not having coolant so I ran coolant on this on my second one and it came out great um, this stuff makes tons and tons of shaving so I'm having to clean it out every time or at least clean most of it because um, it's just huge piles so anyways I'll show you what the first one looks like you know it's in this machine is done in stages you know um, also I didn't have a uh, end mill that had a decent flute length um, so I'm running a 9 16 end mill in here that has an inch and a quarter flute length and inch and inch and eighth excuse me and the the part is an inch and a quarter tall so I'm having to do two steps in order to do it and it's a shoulder the 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 shank on the end mill is half inch and 9 16 mill so it's great I'm able to uh, do the full length and not have to worry about the, sh the shank hitting the part. But I'll show you what the first one is. Uh, I've produced this one. This is the first one off of, well, the second one. Um, like I said, it's done in stages, so I'm gonna machine them all. I've already cut a bunch of billets, like the one that's in the, the vise right now. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll machine all of them that look like this. And then I'll flip it over and uh, surface remove this excess material and then it'll get rotated and set in the vise to bore the holes for the bolts to go through to lock it in place. Like I said, I'm, I got my uh, probe in here, so I've probed it. Um, and like I said, it's it has uh, a total of, not counting the uh, probe, but there's two, two bits. I have to manually change um, to the 916 because I don't have that in my uh, automatic tool changer. Um, I simply I don't put it in there because the 916 is in a totally different uh, fitting here and it, don't, it won't work. Um, so I have to manually change it and then whenever it machines and does its uh, function and then it'll move over and prompt me to remove it manually and then after that it'll automatic do the automatic tool change for my chamfer bit to run the chamfer. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, stop the vid and get this thing ready to go and then we'll come back. I'll show a little bit of machining. I'm not gonna cover all of the machining. We'll kind of go through this a little bit. I may do a, you know, a little while and then actually do it as a uh, fast forward footage. It's kind of hard to see through the window on this machine. Uh, when, it's, when the coolant's spraying all over the place. And as you can see, I mean, it literally makes big wads and they stick to the window here. And there's huge piles over here. So luckily, I'm glad that I have a manual tool change. It has a blowdown function when it does change, but there's so much of that plastic all over because it's so light and it just sticks to everything. Unlike, you know, when I machine aluminum, it doesn't stick as bad to that. Um, but this plastic just gets really caked up on air. So I have an air hose inside here, and then I just, when I do the manual part, I blow down my automatic tool changer to make sure that it's clear and doesn't get one entrapped uh, when it does the change. So anyways, we'll get uh, pause the video, and when we come back, I will be ready to start machining. All right, here we go. surfacing the top of it, basically just cutting a small amount off the top layer to true it up. 
then after that it'll start cutting the actual forms. So when it's done cutting, we'll come back so you can see the, the bulk of the mess that it leaves in there. Like I said, sorry you can't see it, but the coolant gets splattered all over the place. And I haven't been able to machine, you know, my first try, it doesn't work very well without the coolant. So anyways, we'll be back. I said, what the heck, let's try it. I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen. Um, if I can't see it, then uh, like I said, I'll speed this up. So right. All right, it's done with its stage. So when it spools down, and then the uh, pump will shut off, and voila, it's all done. So you can see, that's what the part looks like. And as I mentioned earlier, the plastic leaves this like thin film on it. The rest of it's nice and clean, super smooth. Um, it does have a little bit of fuzz on there, but that easily scrapes right off. But it's, see what I'm talking about with my ATC? So my blowdown, I don't, it would probably clear it, no problem. But I, I want to clear it myself because when I built the machine, I added an airline. So I have an air uh, line in here so I can blow things down in there. But as you can see, it creates a whole lot of material that gets wasted or thrown away. So I'm going to uh, get this cleaned up and then we'll come back and I'll show you the final stages on this half. All right, we're back. I got it cleaned up. So basically I have to prompt to move to the next step cycle. So now it's going to move over to this position and it's going to prompt me to uh, remove uh, the tool that's in here. So let me pause it and then remove the tool because I can't do that and hold the phone without worrying about damaging the end mill. Okay, I've removed the tool that was in there. So I hit the prompt again. All right, I forgot to hit the uh, uh, clear button. So now it raises it up. You see it go down. It goes down and picks up the tool bit. Locks it in the draw bar. Comes out. Once it clears that, that'll drop out of plate. Back into rest position. And then after that, it spins up. And turns on the coolant. This is a really fast cycle. I don't know if you can see it. You'll see the stuff just basically falling off. That's it. So there's the fall off part. So I got a nice, uh, good chamfer on the edge. Like I said, there's some little bit of fuzzies, but like I said, this is plastic, so it's really hard to uh, make a determination. On, I don't know if that's normal um, it is plastic so you're trying to do your best to not have those kind of fuzzies and that end mill that I'm that 9 16 could probably be pretty kind of worn so that's a number two it's ready to go hopefully you can see the surface finish in there Let's see if we can put it on there I said that's that half so now I'll grab my other one here and as you see, we have two. So we have six more to make. So anyways, that's it for this one. And we'll come back whenever I got everything done. Like I said, uh... Morning, everybody. Um, it's a new day. I machined all eight of the bearing blocks last night. It took, takes about, for this single cycle, I think it's about 10 minutes to machine that. I didn't clean between uh, cuts at the end, all except for I would clear off around the ATC. So you can see there's inside, it's pretty packed. Um, those uh, two, mil two thousand cent shavings, man, it makes a lot of them with the amount of machining that's done on it. Where I would clear, you can see a nice trash bag full. Anyways, uh, so this is step one of a, a three-step operation. So now I have to set them in the vise like so and surface, take this surface off right here. All right, we have all eight of them done on the second process. As you can see, nice and clean. Now we're ready to do the, the 
third and final process, which is to bore the holes for the through bolts that allows the two halves to clamp together to create the bearing. All right, here we are, we're doing the final stage of doing the uh, bores for the uh, bolts. All right, so we'll open this up and you can see it sitting there, pull it down. So that's the nice part. We remove it out of the vise. And voila, you have a really pretty hole with a chamfer. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the last of them and then we will move on to the next stages. All right, these are all done. Um, it, like I said, there's a total of four bushings in the uh, rake assembly um, or feed as rake feed assembly or whatever it's called. Um, so it requires two per thing. So there's a total of four for each uh, set of rakes. So, and then there's uh, some smaller bushings that go up, I guess where another hinge is at. So we have to machine those next. Those are a one piece bearing where these are split. All right, we are making bearing number two on the first stage. Um, here's the first one that came off. Um, definitely better surface finish. because The end mill was not all nasty and you know, it was an old end mill that I used to machine the other one. I just didn't have nothing deep enough as far as flute length. But the bore looks beautiful. Good surface finish all around. Really nice chamfers. So that's the first stage of the one piece bearing block. All right, all these four are done. Um, came out really, really nice. Good surface finish on there. Um, so we are ready to start installing. So stay tuned. All right, here we are. We have all of the bearings are all made. <clears throat> um, as you've seen in the video on how I made them, um, they all started their life out as just a chunk of plastic cut into little billets and then machined. I bought one size because it was cheaper than trying to get the different sizes for different amounts. So I bought one size that was cheaper. So um, there's a total of eight of these bearing halves. As you can see, they were just replaced the broken uh, parts that's here. So we have these bearing plates. These are the ones that go in the U-bolts. Um, and then there's uh, steel back plates like this um, that goes on the on both sides of it. Um, so those are done. This one here was the one that's closest. It's the outboard side of it's the feed fork assembly. It was still steel. And these are this is the end of the spring assembly, and then this goes up into the hoop section of the spring assembly. And they were steel with a nylon bushing on the inside. Um, I produced those. This one is for the replacement of this. I basically replicated this one. This one goes to the gearbox side. So I replicated that. Uh, because it's only a single bolt holding it and I didn't make it square or made it round just like that one it wasn't a big deal so that's to replace that one and then this one replaces this one and then this plate here was as you can notice it's a little bit shorter um, and I did that on purpose um, because it's this one here has a steel plate that goes on there because see there's the ring for the uh, spring assembly and it has a steel plate going on it right here and it's a little bit thicker on this side so i basically replicated that for this larger one um, i made my own steel plate so this has got a steel backing plate so it'll come up to be the same thickness as that one like so so these are all done. So we are at this point, we are ready to start assembly. Um, still waiting on a few other parts. 
and then we will start assembling these items. Um, I may produce these if someone has an interest in needing some of these bearings. Um, you know, give me a contact, you know, drop something down in the description and I'll see if I can help you out.